In this chapter, you'll be discovering how to create your very own website that's capable of detecting comment spam live in the web browser using a pre-made TensorFlow.js machine learning model. But before you can use that, it's time to learn the basics of how to interact with natural language models. Specifically, you'll be using a model that uses the average word embedding implementation. But what exactly is that? And why will you use it over the many other models that are also available? Let's dive into this deeper to learn more. So there are many pre-made models available natively in TensorFlow.js that are easy to use in just a few lines of code, as you've seen. But today, you'll be considering models that are available from TensorFlow's model maker to learn how to take exported saved models from this system and use them in TensorFlow.js, writing all the code to interface with the model directly ourselves at the tensor level. Let's take a look at the models available for text classification. Looking at the model maker documentation, you can find three text-based models. The key thing to note here is that all of the model architectures shown essentially do the same job. It's just that some are more accurate or versatile than others. In fact, all of these can be used for comment span detection. As web engineers, size is a big concern to us. For that reason, you can disregard the BERT base model as it's simply too large for us to deploy to the client side. Though it should be noted, if you're running in Node.js on the server side, then this could be a very suitable candidate for that environment. So that leaves us with two options. One is under one megabyte in size, which would be very acceptable for both mobile and desktop. And the other is 25 to 100 megabytes in size, depending on this thing called quantization. Now, if you go back to your high school days, you may remember that computers have different ways to represent numbers, depending on the range of numbers that you want to store as shown in this table. Clearly, the more memory you use to represent a number, the larger range of numbers you can potentially store, but it comes with a memory cost. When building and training a model, it's very common that the 32-bit float type is used to store the model weights that allow it to classify the data correctly. However, it turns out that even if you reduce the precision to an 8-bit integer for the weights, the model does not lose too much accuracy. Quantization simply means reducing the precision of a number stored in the model to make the resulting file size of the model smaller and therefore download faster, which is great for the web world. In the chart, you can see how an unsigned 32-bit floating point number is transformed to a single 8-bit integer. One thing to note here is that very often, only a small part of the floating point space is actually used as shown in the diagram at the bottom. So you can simply find the bounds of that range and transform it to the full 8-bit space to retain as much detail as possible. Now, the number that previously took up 32 bits of memory takes up just 8 bits of memory, which uses four times less storage space. Now, for the web page you're creating today, you want it to run as fast and on as many devices as possible. So the one megabyte average word embedding model is the one that you shall use. You can always switch to the larger quantized model later if you wanted to. Now you've selected a model to use, the next step is to figure out how to pass data into it. As you know, machine learning models essentially work by processing numbers numbers in, numbers out, and typically floating point numbers to be precise. But if you want to learn information about words, which are a string of characters, how can these words be represented as numbers such that those that are alike for a given measure have a similar numerical representation? Let's think about a few ways to do this to learn how our pre-made model is working behind the scenes. Okay, so let's start with a word car. You could simply assign it a number based on its literal order in the English dictionary. However, whilst this will show that the word's characters are similar to another word, for example, cat, which would be numerically close, that's not useful here as you want the meaning to be similar, not the character order. So how can you encode words to give a numerical way to separate them for a given classification problem? Well, another option would be to have our own dictionary of say 1000 words that you want to be able to compare and then give them each a score for a dimension of interest. For example, if you had a measure of how medical a word was, doctor would score very high, maybe 0.95, versus something like pilot, which would score lower on this particular dimension, maybe minus 0.4 using the scale on this slide. Now, one dimension is probably not enough to be useful for classification, so you may need to have several dimensions to allow you to organize the words in a way that might be more suitable to do what you need to do. As a simple illustration of this, let's say you discovered two meaningful dimensions that measured how medical a word was and also how biological the word was too. You could now draw a 2D graph to represent this and any word would lie somewhere on this chart. So for each word in your custom dictionary, 
you'd have a two-dimensional vector to indicate where it lies on each of these dimensions, which you can then use to represent words to train your model with. In the case of the word tumor, for example, it may have a vector of 3, 3, which you can plot on a 2D graph as shown to see where the point would lie. Likewise, the word x-ray, while it's also quite often related to medical things, is not biological, so it may get a score of 2, minus 3. And here are some other word vectors for comparison. You can think of a vector as an array of numbers where the array length indicates how many dimensions you're working with, and the value of a number indicates where it is on the scale of that dimension. It turns out that computers can work with any number of dimensions, like 200 for example. Whilst this is hard for humans to visualize as you live in a 3D world, the principle is the same as the 2D visualization on this slide. In fact, when training a machine learning model like this, you can specify how many dimensions you want to try and utilize for separating the words in your dictionary. And it will then go ahead and find the most meaningful ways to separate the training data leading to the best classification results for the task desired. And it's actually a rule of thumb determined from research that the fourth root of the number of words that you have here will work pretty well. So if I'm using, say, 2000 words in my dictionary, a good starting point for this would be seven dimensions to give us enough ways to separate the words in a meaningful way for future classification. So if you have a sentence like free software and compared the resulting word vectors with a new sentence like cheap download, here, Free and cheap have a similar vector encoding, and software may have a similar encoding to download. If you add the vectors for each sentence, the overall vector representing each sentence ends up being roughly in the same location if you plotted it on a seven-dimensional graph as shown by the totals on the right. Now you've got a way to represent similar sentences with similar vectors, and you can use those vector representations of sentences to train a custom machine learning model to then classify a sentence to be spam or not spam. And here's the end result of visualizing the pre-made spam classifier that you're going to be using today. It also uses seven dimensions to function, but here those seven dimensions have been mapped to a 3D visualization to help explore the word's relations when interpreted for spam. You can see from this visualization how clusters of words that have high correlations of spam versus not spam end up living in different physical spaces as shown. And with that, it's time to get coding yourself and put this all into action. Head on to the next section to create a website that can classify spam comments entirely in the web browser. See you there.